Hi, I'm Brian Crombie, and we're going to be talking on The Brian Crombie Show. We're going to be talking about politics, arts, business, and social issues on The Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. Brian Crombie show on Canada One TV. So I came across this fascinating blog on uh, LinkedIn, um, put there by a friend of mine who's a, a partner at a law firm, but written by her and an articling student about uh, two S LGBT plus rights. And I didn't even know what two S uh, was. I, I thought I knew what LGBT was, and and so I wanted to reach out to this partner and she said, you don't want to talk to me, you want to talk to this articling student uh, because she is uh, the one that wrote most of the article, uh, the blog, and, uh, and is passionate about uh, rights for uh, sexual orientation. Um, uh, and so I wanted to introduce you tonight to, uh, to Erin. Erin, how are you? I'm good, thank you, Brian. Thank so you're you. an articling student? Yes, I'm an articling student. And where student. are you an articling student? I'm an articling student at Robbins Appleby and I'm currently in the litigation rotation. I've been there for almost five months now. And soon I will be transitioning into the rest of the groups being corporate, real estate, and tax and estate. Fantastic. And you decided to write this blog on, uh, on rights for people that are 2S LGBT+, correct? Right. Q+, but yes. Oh, did I meet, miss one? I missed <laughs> um, LGBTQ+. Yes. I missed one. I apologize. No, okay. that's okay. So, so please, let's start with explaining what is 2S LGBTQ+. Right, so that represents a broad umbrella of persons who are gender or sexual minorities. So it includes two-spirit, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, um, queer, and the plus sign incorporates a whole bunch of other different um, sexual or gender minorities. Really? Okay, so let's break this down. Um, what's two-spirit? Two-spirit is a term that refers to indigenous persons who, um, it's also an umbrella term, so it incorporates um, people who identify with um, feminine and masculine um, genders within themselves and historically it was someone that the community often looked to for um, knowledge and medical expertise. Feminine and masculine within themselves. Right. And they were looked to for medical expertise. Yes, and really? just a knowledgeable person in the community. Really, that's interesting. And uh, you know, LGBTQ is lesbian, bisexual, transsexual, and gay. Transgender, gay, and queer. And queer. And, and, and why I would have thought queer is sort of an umbrella term for all of that. Why do you have to have that as a separate term? It is also an umbrella term, but I believe um, some people don't like to define themselves maybe as lesbian, gay, or any of the other ones. So queer kind of incorporates everything. Okay. And, uh, and, and you corrected me. I said transgendered and you said transsexual. I think you said transsexual and I said transgender. Okay, I apologize. <laughs> no, that's okay. So what's the difference? I hope I don't sound naive, but I, I just don't know. I don't know if transsexual is a term used, but I think the term used is transgender. Transgender, okay, I apologize. No, I, no, that's okay. Rocky Horror Picture Show, I think, is where the <laughs> transsexual comes from, I apologize. And then plus is? Plus is everything else. Everything else. Um, so for example, asexual, pansexual, anything else that wants to be included in the community. What's pansexual? That is where you're attracted to um, all the genders. So it doesn't matter what gender someone is, you can be attracted to them. Isn't that bisexual? Bisexual is you are attracted to um, ma male or female. So, so what's pans how's pansexual different than bisexual? There are people who identify as non-binary. So people who are pansexual could be um, attracted to them, could be attracted to transgenders, not just male or female. Okay, well that's helpful to get the sort of the the, uh, the, the spectrum I, uh, identified. So this blog that you wrote um, yes. was about uh, human rights um, mm -hmm. for, for people uh, with different sexual orientations right. um, that, that are under this uh, umbrella that we just described. Tell us about uh, what human rights are. What, the, what are the rights that uh, people have that, uh, that are uh, of, of a different sexual orientation? Right, so in Canada, um, we have provincial legislation and federal legislation. Um, so the provincial legislation was amended in 1986 to include um, protections based on sexual orientation and the federal legislation was amended in 1996 to, to include um, sexual orientation as a pr protected ground. Um, 
although in the charter still to this day, sexual orientation is not named as an enumerated ground under the charter for um, discrimination and equality rights. It's not named, I thought it was. No, so interesting. we have a category of grounds that are called analogous grounds, um, which means that they're also protected now, but they're just not named in the charter. And that came from- Is, uh, there, is, is the term analogous grounds in the charter? Um, it's in the treatment of the charter. So there are a bunch of grounds that have been deemed to be analogous because they are considered deeply personal and changeable only at an unacceptable personal cost. Deemed by who? By the Supreme Court? Yes. Really? Yes. So the Supreme Court has effectively deemed that there's other rights in the charter that weren't writ written in the ch charter because they're analogous. Right. Really? And that includes sexual orientation. Okay. So what is in the charter? Um, things like race, um, religion, um, sex, uh, there's a handful So you can't of discriminate because of race, religion, or sex. Right. And what the Supreme Court has done is said in an analogous situation, you can't discriminate um, for sexual orientation, even though that wasn't written in the charter. Because what? Because it's per deeply personable and, uh, and not easily changeable? Yes, because it's deeply personable and it's unchangeable or only at a unacceptable personal cost. Really? That's interesting. Yes. And and so, you know, we've heard a lot about how the Supreme Court in the United States, at least I have, about how the Supreme Court in the United States has has really created uh, laws. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Roe v. Wade is sort of the one uh, example that people talk about all the time uh, where abortion was made uh, illegal in the United States or, or anti, you know, uh, being laws against abortion were made effectively illegal in the United States. Um, what you're saying, is that happening in Canada too? That the Supreme Court actually changed our laws. Yes, so it was in Eganby, Canada in 1995, where the Supreme Court had a case where there was a um, same-sex couple and there was a security act, and one spouse applied for a pension under that act, and they were denied because they were not a heterosexual couple, and that was the only definition of spouse that was provided in the act. So um, the case ended up going to the Supreme Court based on human rights, and the Supreme Court said that um, sexual orientation is an analogous ground. So that has transferred into laws now such that um, based on the charter, you can't discriminate based on someone's sexual orientation. Really? And, and just out of interest, was it a unanimous uh, vote, do we know, or was it a majority vote? It was definitely majority. I'm not sure if it was I guess unanimous, it had to be. but yeah, <laughs> definitely majority. Well, that's interesting. And is it, have, has it ever been uh, challenged or uh, know that it's a precedent that's stood its test in time? Yes, it's definitely stood its test in time. And a few years later in 1998, um, Vereen v. Alberta came along. And in this case, there was a um, lab coordinator who was working at a private college and his employment was terminated because the college found out about his sexual orientation. So he challenged this and tried to bring a human rights complaint in Alberta. However, the human rights legislation there at this time did not protect based on sexual orientation. Um, and this went up to the Supreme Court as well, and they said that um, from this case on, every province's human rights legislation has to protect based on sexual orientation. Really? Yes. So really, our laws have changed in right. Canada because of the Supreme Court uh, deciding in these two cases. For sure. Yes. And, and so uh, if, if someone is discriminated uh, because of sexual orientation in Ontario today, what does one do about it? Right. So there's a few different routes that someone could go. Um, if they have been wrongfully dismissed, they could bring a civil action in court and tack on a human rights complaint. There's also the human rights tribunal where someone could go and um, bring a human rights complaints for something such as sexual orientation discrimination. However, um, the tribunal is experiencing a bit of backlog now because of the COVID-19 pandemic, but hopefully um, soon it'll get back to processing complaints at a normal time. Really, that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for writing this blog. Thank you. Uh, and uh, if you haven't had a chance to read this blog, uh, I'll put a link in, uh, in, the, in the reference to the show. It's really an extremely well-written article about, uh, about just the issues that Erin uh, Lee has been chatting about tonight. But she's also got an interesting personal story that probably had some impact on her motivation to write uh, this article. And we're going to come back after the break and talk a little bit about her own personal story. Um, stay with us, everyone. अगर खुशियां गिनने का मीटर होता तो साफ दिख जाता 
सऊदी अरब वाले असगर भाई की इतनी दुबई में सलमान और शाहिदा बाजी की इतनी बरतानिया से राशिद चचा और अमेरिका वाले आसिम साहब की न सिर्फ इतनी खुशियां बढ़ चुकी हैं, बल्कि बढ़ती ही जा रही हैं। इन सब के साथ साथ दीगर पाकिस्तानी भी ढेरों खुशियां समेट रहे हैं सोनी धरती रेमिटेंस प्रोग्राम के शानदार रिवॉर्ड पॉइंट्स के साथ तो बैंक्स और एक्सचेंज कंपनी से रकम भेजते रहिए और हासिल करते रहे रिवॉर्ड पॉइंट्स के बदले फ्री सर्विसेज इंटरनेशनल एयर टिकट्स, टैक्स और ड्यूटी पेमेंट्स, शिनाख्ती दस्तावेज की रिन्यूअल इंश्योरेंस पेमेंट्स, यूटिलिटी स्टोर से खरीदारी और बहुत सारी सहूलियाँ आज ही सोनी धरती ऐप डाउनलोड कीजिए और रजिस्टर हो जाए क्यूँकी आपके दम ऐसी ही है पाकिस्तान की तरक्की और खुशहाली सोनी धरती रेमिटेंस प्रोग्राम हमेशा अपनों के करीब हुकूमत पाकिस्तान स्टेट बैंक ऑफ पाकिस्तान और मालियाती इदारों की जानब से एक अहम कदम Hi, I'm Brian Crombie, and we're going to be talking on the Brian Crombie Show. We're going to be talking about politics, arts, business, and social issues on the Brian Crombie Show on Canada One TV. On Canada One TV, uh, it's a pleasure of mine tonight to be chatting with Erin Lee, who is an articling student at Robbins Appleby, uh, a law firm in Toronto, where she's a uh, articling student in the litigation department. Uh, and we're talking about two uh, S L G B T Q plus uh, rights and an article that she wrote about uh, how those rights are protected uh, in uh, Canadian law. But but let me start, Erin. Um, Legal rights are one thing. I think you also have to have sort of a spirit of uh, of accepting of diversity and inclusion, don't you? Yes, I agree. And that's something that I think um, Robbins Appleby as, as a firm has really worked on. We have a strong equality, diversion, diversity and inclusion um, committee who has really worked to um, bring these values into our firm. For example, in August, we had a workshop based on inclusion and diversity in the workplace, which focused on 2S LGBTQ plus rights. And um, I think that this principle and doing things like these really show that these are important values in our firm. Excellent. Um, you know, I think the the line that you know you hear all the time is that diversity is a fact, inclusion is a choice, um, and equality is the future. Uh, I think is something that uh, we've got to focus on. There, there is a diverse community. There's no question, and whether it be race or or religion or or, or uh, sexual orientation or gender um, or age, frankly, because I think there's some discrimination against uh, against older people or younger people. Um, I think all those. Uh, things are obvious and diversity therefore is a fact but making sure everyone feels included and more than that not just included but equal is really something that we've got to strive for all right i agree completely so you've got an interesting personal story that i found out about uh, over time in regards to uh, your exposure to um, um, sexual orientation can you tell me about that a little yeah, um, so when the litigation partner Barbara Green brought this blog post article idea to me, I was really excited to be involved because um, being a good ally is very important to me. I did grow up in a non-traditional family with two moms who are gay and also a gay father. Um, so I think that having that background, I really... You've um, got two gay moms yes. and a gay father. Yes. Okay. Yes. and. Um, my twin sister and I were born. Um, we are um, the, one of our mothers is our biological mother and our biological father as well. Um, so we've grown up very accepting and inclusive. And um, I think coming from this background, it's really important to me to continue to strive for greater inclusion and diversity. What was it like growing up with two moms? It was great. Um, we're really close as a family. I mean, there's also obviously some struggles of being um, a non-traditional family, especially. And you grew up in a small town. Yes. Yes. So not only did you grow up with two moms, which is a little bit different, uh, but you grew up with two moms in a small town. Right. What was that like? Were there other gay families in uh, in your small town? 
No, so we were the only ones um, in Madoc, um, which made it a little bit challenging. Um, my mom's always did really well and kind of represented the community in Madoc, I felt. Um, and my sister Kia and I kind of took on that role as well. Um, and Madoc as a community, honestly, it was pretty accepting. I think because we have lived there since we were babies, everyone grew up with us and all of our classmates. It was a small class, so everyone knew of our family. Um, so it was a really good environment. You describe your moms as, as gay, not lesbian or bisexual. Why, right. why did you choose that terminology? Um, I think they probably identify both as lesbian and gay. Um, maybe traditionally more so le as lesbian, but um, not bisexual because they're only attracted to women. Even though you got a gay father? Yes. So that wasn't a bisexual relationship? No. Okay. No, my I'm... mothers were always together. Okay, I apologize. How no, long? Okay. They have been together 36 years. Really? Have you ever asked them how they came out, how they decided, how they knew, not decided, how they knew that they were uh, lesbian? Um, I think they knew from a pretty young age, definitely by high school, they knew of their sexuality. Um, I think it maybe took them until they were in university to really come out. And um, I think it definitely has become easier now than it was back then for um, people to come out. But um, yeah, they, their, their families were both, um, it was obviously a long time ago, so maybe it was a bit more difficult back then, but their families, when Kate and I were, came along, we had three sets of great, um, great grandparents. Um, so it was, they were well accepted in their families by that point. And, and, and did you ever have some issues with it? With their sexuality? Yeah. No, no. When I, people in high school or elementary school asked you about the two moms, did you ever, did it ever, was it ever a problem? Sometimes people were insensitive or, um, when we were growing up, there was a lot of derogatory language being used in school. Um, so that was a bit challenging, but Kate and I People said, oh, you're so gay or you're so whatever, yeah. like you would react against I that? I wouldn't or? say anything, but um, internally, I think it in impacted both my sister and I. I can, I can imagine. Um, but we were always both very proud of our moms. That's wonderful. Thank and you. uh, your, your, your moms must be very proud of you today. Thank you. I hope so. Did they read your article? They did. Did they watch your interview? Yes, they did. Fantastic. Um, so uh, this is interesting. Uh, you know, w you talked about the Supreme Court uh, ruling that was something deeply personable and not easy. What was the language? Not easily changeable? Mm -hmm. I, unless at an unacceptable personal cost. Do you think your parents' lesbianism, gay, their, mm -hmm. their, the fact that they're gay, is non-changeable? Yes, completely. So do you believe they were born lesbian? They, they, they didn't make a choice, they were born. Mm -hmm. Like there's a gay gene. Um, yeah, studies have shown that there might be a genetic link to um, lesbian or gayness. Um, I'm not an expert on that by any means, but I think they definitely were born the way they are. I happen to agree with you. I, I have a, a gay son and uh, I, I am convinced that it is genetic. But actually, it's interesting because you'd also be a study on what other people think. Some people think that it's socialized. And so you were born into and grew up in mm -hmm. a family with two moms. Right. Uh, which, you know, people that think you're socialized into it would suggest that, that you'd end up being lesbian because you were socialized into it. Right. And neither my sister and I do identify um, as part of that community. But, um, yeah, I definitely think that we always grew up knowing that whoever we loved, it would be okay and they would accept us no matter what. So I think that um, created a very welcomed environment for us to be whoever we were. You know, this is interesting, because I guess I can, I can sort of see your family in Cabbage Town uh, or, you know, in Toronto, but right. in a small town in Eastern Ontario. Mm -hmm. Yes, we were actually born in Toronto. My mom's met in Toronto in a gay baseball league. Um, and we were born here, and then we moved back when we were about one to live you're my mom's family. And the two of you, uh, you and your sister, mm -hmm. um, are both Articlean students yes. and both played on uh, the York University hockey team, I understand. Right, yes. And you were a winger and she was defense? Yes. Fantastic. And how did you do in, uh, in hockey? Um, personally or as a team? Both. Um, we, my sister and I both loved hockey. 
Um, our goal was always to play in the OUA, so we were very happy to get there. And um, York is a hardworking team. In the past couple of years, they've definitely um, stepped it up and they made it to the Nationals a couple of years after we left the team. Um, and interestingly, my mom also played for York when she went there. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Which mom? The, um, what my mom? biological mom. So, so, so uh, athletic ability is genetic probably as well. Then. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Fantastic. Um, if you were sitting across from someone who uh, was homophobic right. and believed that it's a choice, and, uh, and you know, there's places that you know, believe in conversion therapy, as an example, where you can pray your, uh, your gayness away. What would you say to them? Um, I think I would just try to impress upon them that it's not a choice. Um, as the Supreme Court have said, it's not changeable, except that an unacceptable cost to that person's um, being and their personality and who they are. Um, I think sometimes people hide behind religious views and hold these, um, this hatred towards other people or in acceptance. And I think that we all have to try to move to a place where we are more accepting of other people, um, not just of sexual orientation, but race and other types of diversity. Erin Lee, it's people like you that I think are going to be, uh, um, you know, an example of uh, a far more positive future for uh, Canada and uh, I hope uh, you do I know you'll do very well uh, in uh, in the law I hope uh, uh, I hope I don't need your services in litigation <laughs> uh, at some point in time in the future but if I do I'm sure that you'll do a, a stellar job and I look forward to the next article that uh, you write what's the next article going to be on any idea I'm not sure yet but I'll keep you posted please do Erin <laughs> Lee um, fascinating article that she wrote on uh, on 2s LGBTQ plus rights uh, based on uh, human rights uh, uh, law that sort of come out uh, over time because of Supreme Court uh, findings that uh, I think it's interesting have found uh, and let me get the wording right uh, Aaron that it's deeply personal uh, and only changeable at a significant personal cost yes and because of that um, sexual orientation has been deemed analogous to race religion and uh, and sex mm -hmm. that's fascinating uh, and if uh, you have a chance and you're interested in this topic, Erin Lee on, it, on LinkedIn, um, check out her blog. It's, it's really well written and all this, uh, the precedences in the Supreme Court uh, findings are, are in the, the article. It's really interesting reading. And Erin uh, Lee, I uh, hope to uh, see great things from you in the future. I'm sure I will. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you joining us. Back. That's our show for tonight. Thanks for joining us. Good night, everybody. आज ही सोनी धरती ऐप डाउनलोड कीजिए और रजिस्टर हो जाइए क्योंकि आपके दम से ही है पाकिस्तान की तरक्की और खुशहाली सोनी धरती रेमिटेंस प्रोग्राम हमेशा अपनों के करीब हुकूमत पाकिस्तान स्टेट बैंक ऑफ पाकिस्तान और مالیاتی اداروں کی جانب سے ایک اہم قدم Do you want to start your own business in Canada? Is it your dream to own a gas station? Would you like to invest in a residential development? If yes, then you need to contact Mirza Zulfikar Chaudhary, one of the best residential and commercial brokers in the community. Call Mirza Zulfikar Chaudhary, broker of Global West Realty Limited at 416-908-1575. हम gas station और commercial plaza की development का काम करते हैं। अगर आपको gas station की development के हवाले से या gas station खरीदने के हवाले से कोई भी मशवरा चाहिए, तो आप हमसे रात्ता कर सकते हैं। Mirza Zulfikar Chaudhary. Broker of Global West Realty. Phone number 416-908-1575. Amazing opportunity to buy detached house from high $600,000. Just 